Heading out to one of my pickers today, we're going to look at a whole bunch of costume jewelry, vintage costume jewelry, and a ton of records. We're gonna see what we got, and we're heading out right now. I might do that. So these are two, and those are one, and one dollar below. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I spent 200 on all that stuff there. Four different places. You went to four different places to get all this? Everything was going high. Pile records, like that. A handful. 40 bucks choice. It was like 50 bucks choice. 30 bucks choice. What kind of records were they? 45s? 33s. And they went for that much? Yeah. Wow. How much are those little dudes up there? I was going to ask 10 bucks for the three. Ten bucks for the three, yeah. Oh, so there's gonna be more jewelry showing up. Yeah. Let me stick the two dollar up there. Okay. And then the one dollar will go. Up on the edge. Odd mix of stuff in here, though. Huh? It's been an odd mix. So I'm back. I got one box of stuff, which you can pretty much see here. There's some jewelry. I literally just threw it in this box just to carry it. I'm not going to show you the records in this video. I've got a lot of other interesting small items, including some really exceptional uh, jewelry items in here as well. Um, I'll show you some close-ups that in just a few minutes here now the record breakdown There's 12 records that should get me back around 475 I'll probably do a video for that in patreon to show some of the records and talk about records again But the other items here are very very interesting very unique I have $132 into everything. So the records themselves will net me over three times profit on all of the items that I bought. So $132, I'm going to get $475 back from just 12 records. The other 78, 45 records in this lot, I should be able to get two, two fifty dollars a piece back out of them selling them in bulk. So that was my ploy originally. I do buy those to resell. I've talked about it before. Selling certain types of records in bulk is pretty good for me. Most of the records I have here will sell from five to seven fifty or so a piece if I wanted to mess with listing them. I'm looking, I already bought some that are going to make me some good money, so I usually buy a bunch of those five to seven dollar ones. I'll sell them for two fifty to three max a piece. Now that's going to be my take home. They're paying shipping as well. So that's the ploy I do on those. I don't have any problem with doing it in bulk. I'll just give them to an employee. They'll just type in the artist, the label number. Sometimes I haven't put songs, but I usually don't even do that. Most people who know records or will be looking for something will know which ones are on there or just the artists themselves will dictate whether they want to buy them. Most of the ones in here, the labels are a little odd or the artist does have some decent discs. So now let's cut over and I'm going to show you some close-ups on the other items. Okay, so here's one of the nice items here. Valley of the Kings. This is rather interesting. I wasn't even sure what this was made in Egypt. It's actually a Christmas ornament, handmade 
of glass. It has the paperwork with it as well, um, which you can see. A um, little damage to it. I'm not going to really worry about that. The ornament itself is in excellent condition. It's actually a very nice ornament in my book. Very well done. Just a beautiful piece of glass work. Nicely filed down. It's been gilted. It's been actually, it looks, feels like they uh, engraved it as well. So these go for around 40 or 50 bucks on average like this. So that was a good pickup for sure. Again, $132 and everything. Now here's a necklace that I bought. This was a dollar. Now this is 70s or so into the 80s. It's made out of bone, and this is bovine. If you're going to list it on a site, you have to know what type of bone it is. Now, I've seen a ton of bone in my day. It has bone, those are wood, and then these are just regular shell pieces there. In fact, let's do a close-up there just so you can get a better look at what it is. Now, bone-wise, it has some um, like grooves in it, kind of like wood grain almost. There's a difference between bone and ivory, and you really need to know the difference on it. Ivory can get you in a lot of trouble, even if you didn't know that it was ivory. So anyway, this is a fairly nice piece. Something like this, um, as you see it, I'll probably expect to get 15 to 25 bucks, somewhere in that range. It should sell fairly well. This is kind of like the punk 80s era. This stuff is hot right now. 80s is back in. So I do very well with this stuff like this. Most anything that has bone wood shell together like that kind of even goes into the tribal section and I'll sell it that way as well. Now here's another lot here. This is mid-mod century 50s amber lucite. Imitation amber basically. Excellent. You can tell it's original. It has the age. It has patina to it. You've got a matching set of earrings, and then you've got this very big mod mid-century, just awesome piece here of lucite in the center. It's a necklace, and it's a very nice one. Let's back up a little bit here so you can see it in its glory, I guess you could say. Now, this is a vintage piece without a doubt. This should sell readily without any issue. Um, this is the kind of stuff that I do very, very well with. These will sell better than, say, the bone and wood type like that, too. This should be a quick mover in my book. It's just in excellent condition. It's got all the tassels with it. It's definitely an original. You can see the string by looking at it that it's old. As I said, the patina. And I haven't even looked if it's marked. If it's marked, even better, but I don't really care. This piece here should get me, say... 50 bucks or better just by the loose side. The, for some reason, people are gung-ho over this 50 stuff. You're just not going to find stuff like this any other way. And to have the earrings is just an added plus. There may have been a bracelet at one time, but I'm not worried. I didn't pay more than $2 for any set of jewelry or piece of jewelry. This was here as well. $2, I think, on this one. Now here's a set from say the 50s or 60s. It has some very nice iridescent rhinestones on them. This is the kind of thing I kind of list boho on and things along that line as well. This isn't something super, super expensive. I'll probably get about 15 bucks out of these because of the cherub playing the mandolin on it there. And that's how I'm going to market these pieces as well. Rather nice, good condition. Stuff like this doesn't survive. Sometimes they'll get messed up or missing something. Now, I do keep stones to replace some of these. These here would be pretty hard to replace, so I'm glad they're all there. I would not have messed with this piece here uh, if it had a missing stone. Now, there's some other pieces I do buy if they're missing stones. I'm going to show you one in just a minute here. Now, this little piece here is actually the best piece of jewelry in the entire lot. This thing should get me at least $200. This was made by Kokishi Mikimoto, and he is from Tokyo. It's well marked also on here. It'll say K Mikimoto Tokyo, and it'll all be one long line. And there'll be a little symbol at the end of it. I know it might be a little hard to see there. Uh, but that symbol is its sterling mark from that company specifically. In fact, I think we can get a good shot of it right there as you can see it. That is an excellent piece. If you're into costume jewelry or real jewelry at all, Mickey Moto is somebody you have to know. And I'm going to tell you why. Mickey Moto was the founder of Cultured Pearls. He created the first Cultured Pearl. He had the very first pearl store in, I think, Japan in, say, 1910, or maybe it was even before that. But this is an authentic Akoya pearl. 
I'm sure I can get this one certified. This is a piece of jewelry that I probably would certify. Now, he died, I think, in like 53 or 54. So this piece comes from before that. This one little piece here, and I paid a dollar for this, should get me around two, two fifty back without a doubt. Now, some of the pieces that this company that Kokichi made can go for twenty, thirty thousand dollars. So that's a name you should know again because he's the founder of Cultured Pearls. Now, this piece, you may not know what this is supposed to be for. Let me back up just a hair so you can see it. Now, it might take you a minute to realize what this is, but this is a tie clip. Basically, it slides. Well, in fact, you have to open it. You slide it in where your tie is, and then the other side of your shirt, you'll lock this down, and it holds your tie in with that right there. This is a designer piece as well. It's solid sterling. Now, the way the sterling isn't the big issue here or anything like that. It's the name on it. This one I was extremely happy to find. I've only had two other pieces by the same designer. Excellent, excellent piece. Every one you can almost assuredly get at least a hundred bucks for if it has that name on it. Now I talk about tie clips and company logoed items all the time, advertising pieces. These are from Dana Spicer. I believe they made you know, transmission pieces and things like that. This is actually the inner workings of what looks to be some kind of differential or transmission. They made this stuff around here. This was from a ex-employee. I pay a dollar a piece for these. I usually get about 14 to say 17.50 each. I've got two of the same there. Here's a Dana Spicer, an earlier one. Now, something like this, I might get 25 or 30 bucks for. And Dana employee who has to wear a tie for work will probably want this. Um, so I'm not worried at all about selling something like this. I haven't even looked. It has a nice marking on the back. Sometimes these are gold as well because they were given out as an employee bonus. So um, let's fact, let's just zoom in. Maybe we can show you the mark on the back. It's marked Robbins Co. Attleboro, Attleboro, Mass. If you're not sure where that's at. Now here's another one. This is a rear axle actually with the differential in it. So yeah, this is another Dana Spicer piece. And another differential box here, I would say, or something along that line. Dana Spicer as well. So with just the five bucks I have into this, you're looking at 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 70, 75 bucks I should get back out of these. They're advertising employee promotional items. They're not just plain everyday tie clips. Now this piece here was $2. This one has a glass-centered cameo on a mirrored surface now i'm not sure yeah that feels like glass too it's all glass it's two pieces that were probably glued together very lovely for two dollars i'm extremely happy this should sell very well it's probably circa 1940s or 50s by the style of the chain pay attention to that style of chain they didn't make a lot of new ones like this now there could be a mark on it too i'll have to verify that before i do anything with it you have to check everywhere all the bezel and everything else around here every single spot of the item itself needs to be checked many times i do find something hidden mark wise and this one's just a fabulous piece here as you can see excellent condition excellent quality two bucks you'd be crazy not to buy this i should at least get 25 bucks maybe towards the 40 dollar range because it's glass and it's just in primo excellent condition now here's another interesting piece this is marked 800 this is a european made i would gather it has a crystal rock crystal rock quartz crystal in here very very nice piece solid silver as i said let's see if we can't get you where you can see the marking on it now, if you look careful there, you can see the 800 marking on the item there, right just below the fork center. So, rather interesting. For the dollar, there's about five bucks just in silver. And this is old. I would guess this is the 1890s through about 1910-ish, just by the sheer construction. It can be straightened out and a few other things if you really want to. I'll probably sell it like it is or scrap it, depending on it. But for a dollar, I can't go wrong with just busting out the crystal and scrapping it if that's what i want to do here's a really nice 1950s ring now it's glass i don't know if you'll be able to see it but it's actually translucent and you can see through it on the edges i was originally thinking it was like just plain solid glass but it's an opalescent almost 
blue glass. I mean, you can literally see through it. It makes like a gold reflection through it. Very nice. Definitely 50s by the design. You can see the engraved edges around there. Now, I don't see these type very, very rarely. It is missing a few mini BB sized pearls. Now, I keep all that kind of stuff from vintage jewelry. It'll take me about, say, 20 seconds to find the right size and fix this. I will repair this piece here. Excellent piece to repair. I paid a dollar for this. I should get, say, 20 or 30 bucks pretty easily on this one. This is a perfect example of 1950s um, craftsmanship. It's just an excellent piece here. Now, I got this giraffe pin here as well. It's got some very nice rhinestones all over it. It's probably 1950s or so. There is some sort of marking right there, which I'll have to look into. Either way, stuff like this, I list in the collectibles, animals, and giraffe section, something along that line. I don't necessarily list it in the jewelry. I should get 14 or so bucks out of this. Again, another dollar. Now, here's a very nice set of coral craft earrings. Now, these are screwbacks. I don't usually mess with screwbacks, but they're nicely marked coral. These date to around the 40s, probably late 40s, 47, 48, 49, into the very early 1950s. These should get me some decent money. Again, there are missing, I think there's one stone or a pearl missing on one of these. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, there, there is one right there. I'll, again, spend 20 or 30 seconds when I'm fixing the other one and just glue another pearl in these. Now, usually they are marked coral on the base of it there. I know it's probably a little hard to tell, but it is marked coral for coral craft on the base of that. There you go. You should be able to see it much easier. Some of these are dated even. They're very nice pieces. They make some very nice Christmas tree pins from the 30s, 40s, and 50s as well. Now, here's another nice set. I don't remember the name on it, but there's a V. The company's name starts with a V. I'll have to dig through my book, but I recognize the emblem and the V readily on this one here. Now, that could be a real opal. I have looked at it very closely. It does have the same characteristics and glow and glisten of it. It's got some nice rhinestones that are individually set on the outside of it. It's probably around 30s, 40s, 50s at the very, very latest. Mid, deco, uh, mod. That's kind of what I'd be looking at for these. Had it not had the marking on the back, I don't know if I would have messed with them. But once I go back to my book and get the uh, name of the company, I'll do very well on these. At least 15 bucks. Now here's a nice interesting pin from 1961. It's a Chicago Americans Women's Classic Bowling uh, Tournament, basically. Now some of these can be gold, so you always have to double check on some of these. This one does not appear to be it. It doesn't have the right tint or color to it. It's not marked as well. I paid again a dollar for this. I should get about 10 or 15 bucks easily for this one here. Maybe a hair more. I'll probably put it up for 19.99 and just see what happens. Now here's a very unique pin made to look like a man climbing up a ladder. Now, I am almost sure a book I have from the Museum of Modern Art in New York has a very similar looking piece in the book, very similar imagery to it. I'm almost sure this is an artistic piece of some sort. This was cast, you can see it one piece. It doesn't have rungs on the other side of it, which is a little distracting, but it was done in one piece. It's very interesting. It's an art piece for sure, mid-mod century without a doubt. Another dollar. I'm going to estimate I should get at least 25 for this, maybe even more. If I can find a name or who designed this, it could greatly increase that price as well. Now here's another interesting piece. This seems to be a hand cast brass bracelet from Africa. Now this would be described as a Akan Ashanti piece. That would be a tribe. It has a fertility goddess on the front. It actually makes legs as you can see down to the toes there. Really nice piece in all honesty. You have to appreciate the construction. You can see it's completely handmade. I would say without a doubt this is an original. In fact, let's see if we can't zoom in there so you can kind of see the um, you can see the scrapings, the sandings, the filings on the back. This is the real deal. It was cast flat. They heated it back up and bent it into the shape you see it. Again, a dollar for this piece here. I should get around 40 or 50 bucks for this without a doubt. This is an area that many people totally miss and just think it's junk. 
Now, me and the wife have been buying a lot of these type of things for a very long time. The wife and I do buy vintage masks. I have quite a few nice African ones as well, tribal masks. I love this sort of thing. Really is a very nice piece of art in my book. Now, here's three more Ashanti pieces right here. Now, they're from two different eras, this one being the oldest one. In fact, let's zoom in so you can see the detail much better. Now, this is the real deal. A lot of people think these are just junk, these little brass figures. It takes a lot of skill to do anything brass like this, especially with the little fine details. Even if this is sand cast, which it looks almost like it was produced in several different pieces, it's just exquisite work for something like this in my book. It's a drummer. It's a tribal piece. Again, it's an Ashanti, a can. Now, on the bottom, you can see where sprues were, I would gather, as well. So this may have been cast, and then some extra detail could have been added on later. Either way you go, this is an excellent piece, just a fine example. Something like this one here could go for 60 or 70 bucks on its own. Again, there's a difference between the old ones and the new ones, and you should be able to tell the difference just by the color, the details, the faces, everything about it. This is much earlier. Now, some of these Ashanti pieces were also used... Similar pieces just like this for weights for weighing out gold for some of the gold mines in the area. Now I'm going to have to look really close at this piece to make sure there isn't some kind of maker's mark or something. But this is old. This is very old. This is a very nice piece, as I said. Now these two here could be the same thing, similar to some of the weights you may have seen from the same era. Scale weights. But these are just little design pieces, Ashanti as well. Newer pieces, somebody mounted one, I would gather. Or if they were weights, they weighed a little too much, so they took out a little chunk, possibly. I'm not really sure. But either way, these two, I should get at least 15 or so a piece for these. So another 30 bucks. I paid 10 for the three of these, knowing that this one here would get me a very good chunk of change, without a doubt. I don't run into these very much, but whenever I see these brass figures, tribal African figures, I always nab them up. Well, there you go. That's what I have for you today. Just give you a quick idea on things that I do pick up, what I look for, and some interesting aspects on those items as well. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Get a big for blue when the bullet's here. The shit's not like a blow.